Alright, welcome back to the 2020 Cricket Captain South Africa Career Mode for Men's Test Cricket. Today we are going into our second season. Um, so we are now, I think, 10 parts in of the season or the career mode and it's basically all Test Cricket. And I'm just going to be just doing some setups here. We, I, did, I didn't realise this until um, just before when I was doing it off, off, um, offline, but you can actually change the pitch groundsman for your nation. I always thought it was just for your county side or whatever you were um, playing at, because when I played it in Cricket Captain 18, they did not have that in the, um, the national team. You could not change your pitch structure. But as we see here, though, the uh, World Cup was actually won by um, England. So this is... This is this must be the the World Cup for ODI cricket, I think, or is it the T Twenty one? Because we are in a completely new season. We are actually at the end of two thousand and twenty one. Uh, that is because South Africa haven't played any Test cricket all season until the end of basically two thousand twenty one. I mean, we did play obviously in. March or might have been February 2021 but we didn't get any July or June tests so um you know we we're probably only gonna get like three tests this uh this season so I'm just going through the lineup here the, the, for some reason the AI had a really odd uh, selected squad and I can half of the players that were selected in that squad I would not have picked anyway so I don't know what they were what they were looking at, but Giddy is currently injured. Um, I'm going to actually remove him from the squad just because if he's coming off a finger injury, there's no point me playing him because even if he does recover, is you know there's a chance he can get injured again. <laughs> I was surprised uh, um, Hawken was not selected because he was one of our best players uh, last season. I know he is 32, but um, this is why I don't like when the AI... Because generally when you get to a new season, the AI completely disregards whatever squad you have. And they just pick some random squad that might work, but I don't know. I don't like half the squads they pick. Um, we are, we're just basically going to look for some younger players, uh, just because... The the ending to the first season really kind of, um, you know, it just sort of indicated to me that we need to start developing more young players in the side. Um, we can't just rely on, you know, I've brought this guy called Visser in, uh, you saw just there. He has a pretty good average for this season. Um, he's quite new to the scene as well, but... I'm using the, uh, we're just looking at Hamza, he's getting all these runs in T20 cricket, um, he still has that average of 48, but look at his current average, he's only played 5 games, but only for 35, that's not good enough, um, he needs to be getting at least 40s, or high 40s, considering the, the hype around him, now this player here, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but a player, I'll just say, he's a 21 year old, he has a, he's very new to the scene, he's only played three uh, first class games for an average of 55, 53 sorry, and he scored 177, I'm going to actually put him in the squad, um, I don't know whether he'll play or not, but I think I can get some good experience probably um, increasing his, or doing some practice with him, Faf Duplessis, I just want to see if he's playing any first class. He's actually played no first class cricket all season, um, that basically indicates to me he will not be coming back into test side, and he's 37, so before people in the comments say, oh, well, he's, he's one of South Africa's best players of this last five years or whatnot, you really need to look at his statistics, um, and you need to tell me why I should be picking him, because he's very inconsistent, uh, he is getting on with age. And South Africa are in the need to revamp their squad. I personally thought after the ODI World Cup, um, he should have been taken out. I, I think, I don't, from memory, I think he was captain in the ODIs, but I may be wrong. 
But after that abysmal year, uh, South Africa should have taken out um, him as captain in all formats because they were deplorable that year in, in Test Cricket. That was when they lost to Sri Lanka. And that was a, a terrible loss. So Heinrich Klassen, he's another one of those keepers. Um, he has played, I think, a test. But I'm not going to pick him. Just looking for some, maybe some all-round options that we could go with. But I'm going to have to look at uh, this bloke here, Christian Mabowankawani, he has a really good, um, he's only played five uh, first class games this year, but he has a bowling average of 17 and he's already taken 29 wickets. So that is very good, we're going to actually add him to the squad as well. So you'll probably see there's a lot of new players to this squad and that is because my focus for the upcoming series against India is to develop as much youth as possible. Uh, that's not to say that they will all play in the, in the series, but um, just so I can get a feel for, for who's probably got the nick for Test Cricket and who doesn't. And then Gosmo I kind of want to put back in the side um, because he wasn't too bad. I know he is 29, but I'm just going to look around a bit more though. I might look to add an all-rounder and preferably um, there's a guy in their ODI team called Mulder. I might add him because he isn't too old and he could play test cricket. I think he has the nick, he probably has a, some, uh, some potential to play test cricket. So I hope that um, we can give him a go. Just working out whether he'll fit in the squad or not, because we only we only have two more people to pick. So this is only for the first test. So, I he's probably related to one of the Milans because there's a lot of Milans that um play over there. Either that or Milan is fairly common as a South African name, but we're not going to put him in. So there's a guy here, Luke Philander, I wonder if he's related to Vernon Philander. He's, um, his statistics look okay, but uh, it's not really someone I want to be, want to be playing. I'm going to actually look at the uh, one day international stuff. <laughs> Not good enough for my liking, unfortunately. So here he is, Leon Mulder, a uh, 23 year old. He's uh, got a very healthy first class average of 36 for an all-rounder. Um, so we're going to add him to the squad. And he, he gets wickets. As you can see there, he's taken 32 uh, career wickets in ODI. So he's not, he's a, he's an ODI um, type player. So we will see if he can um, mix it at first class. And now I wouldn't be playing an ODI player if he had no first class form, but... As you saw there, he, you know, when you have an average of 36 as an all-rounder in first-class cricket for batting and like a, a low 30s average for bowling, it's quite, you know, quite respectable. And we're just going to do the training here. Um, just looking to get as much. I'm going to try and get Rabada's defensive bowling up because he tends to leak a lot of runs. So I'm um, hoping that this will work and make him not leak runs. Um, I don't know whether Markram... I, I'm, I'm honestly not convinced with Markram. Really, I'm not. But 
at the same time I do want to try him down the order a bit just I just to see what happens like I know he's not a natural he's a he's a he's an opener and he can't really bat anywhere else but I don't like having two aggressive batsmen at the top of the order and that's what Milan and Markram are um, I'd rather have Alga bat defensively as well as um, have Markham in there, and again, the they want Olga as captain, and you can see it's raining uh, on the third day. So this is going to be another one of those tests where uh, we'd want to win the toss and probably bat and hopefully make a good score. But as you see here, we're going to put... Um, I'll probably put Markham at five. So Aaron Visser will be getting his first test. Um, I'm not sure how he will go. I'm not going to give the test to player just because Visser's in better form and he's played more first class matches. But that is the side and we will um, go into this test. Probably not favourites to win the series against India. And as you see there we're coming into bowl. So, no wickets in the first 40 odd minutes, but here we go. Um, whatever his name is, Ma Mabagwani um, gets his first test wicket. And Mulder comes in, his very first test wicket. Brilliant bowling change there, and the danger man, Virat Kohli, is on uh, in the. T in the um, Currently in batting, and you have KL Rahul, who was, I'm assuming, is still the number one ODI batsman in the world, or T20 batsman. As Rabada, hopefully, I mean, he's bowling a lot more economically, which is what I wanted. And Mabagwani gets another wicket, uh, he gets Rahul out for 64. So there's promising signs, I guess, for um, our bowlers so far. We have them 3 for 169, a lot better than what I would have thought to have India at this stage. And uh, Mulder, um, can't get a wicket there. He's going at 5 and over, we're going to take him off. Back to Rabada. And he gets the captain out of the 93, that is a brilliant bowling change again. And we'll get Matt, well, Robata comes back in. And he's another wicket to Robata. He gets uh, Aya out for 67 and Rahane and Richard Pant in. So we can hopefully get some wickets here. We can negate them not making over 400. It'd be very Brilliant bowling display there from Robata. Uh, he is going at nearly 4 and over now, but. I'm going to actually keep him on just a little bit longer. Yeah, we'll take him off. Well, we'll take Mabuani off for uh, Hawken and we will take Rabada back off as well. We're not going to take the new ball yet because our bowlers aren't ready for it. But Mola comes in and out as India. Oh, Mulder again. He's bowled fantastic this test uh, in this innings. And another wicket at India scrape over for 344 after being in a really promising position. You see here they were 6 for 313. They lost three quick wickets. <laughs> and the aim here is we have to hopefully survive the overcast conditions on the second day. Because there is a lot of cloud over um, this test. The issue we're going to have is um, having consistency in our batting lineup because I am sort of making some changes. So I am hoping that we can get a test where I don't have to make changes to the batting lineup and then we can go into the next test and have that consistency continue. 
promising partnership at the moment. 66 for no loss. But unfortunately, as I say that, Alga goes out for 34. Uh, so, again, we need to be getting consistency. That was probably one of our best opening partnerships for the last three tests. But just uh, short, quick succession wickets. Um, Markram hopefully can come in and just do something. But now there's really high cloud coverage, really dark clouds. So uh, Milan can't get a 50. Goes out for 46. It's going to be very tricky to play in these conditions now. Um, so after getting to... My, ho my hope was to get to at least no wickets um, into that dark cloud session in the second session. But unfortunately, as Markram goes, we have lost, I think, four or five wickets in quick succession once the cloud coverage turned dark. So Mulder is still in, let's see if uh, he can salvage something, he has faced 100 balls. We at least don't have to uh, follow on, uh, so that is good as Mulder, I mean he did face 123 balls, I can't really fault him. But and unfortunately we had to bat in probably the hard conditions and we made 183. I'm just... Considering we're not in the lead, I'm just going to take off the wicket, uh, wickets only highlights. We're just going to play through it. Just so we can speed it up a little bit. As Rabada has continued to bowl well this test, um, he's already got three wickets in his second second innings. I think he has... What? There's another. There's four wickets. I mean, we're, there's a lot of rain around. Um... If we can get them out, Rabada again, that's five wickets. Mulder, if we can get them out for under a lead of 320, it might be a chance. But 293 and Rabada takes 7 for 68 in that innings. A fantastic bowling display. I only used three bowlers. Uh, Mulder bowled very well as well. Um, we need 294 to win. It's still overcast conditions on the third day. If we can survive until the the fourth day, we might be a chance in that in the um, with with very sunny conditions. But it's just a matter of surviving a whole session here because if we lose wickets, we're going to lose quick succession wickets. Rain stop play. That's yep, the end of day three. So if we can keep a Somewhat of a consistent partnership here and just trim away. But as Milan goes out, very disappointing. But in saying that, I'm at least pleased that we have the opportunity to, to possibly go for the win. Um, it was a really good bowling performance. Uh, it was pretty much a bowling performance test for both sides, probably. I mean, India did make nearly 400 but in their first innings, but they had that batting collapse, which completely... Um, you know, they were cruising a bit. Yeah. Hopefully, we can have a partnership here, but no, Markram decides to go out, which is very unfortunate. Visa... Hopefully he can make a score. I don't know whether he has the potential to play test cricket. But um, he's looking okay. I mean, De Kock, I think, is batting too high for starters. But, I mean, I can't really do much here. But I don't think we're going to win this test. We're just losing wickets in quick succession. I mean, unless Mulder can pull some heroics here in his first test, he's already bowled fantastic. Um, he's going to have to have a big partnership. And Mulder's out for 18. I think the test is over. There's no way that... Yeah. So, unfortunately, we did lose that test. I mean, not all is lost. I did say that this is going to be a tough series. And credit where credit's due, India did um, 
play well, especially that first innings really won India the test because um, we had two scores under 200.